VCY America presents Crosstalk, a nationwide call-in program discussing issues that have an effect on our families, our communities, our churches, our nation, and our world. Crosstalk, an opportunity for you to voice your concerns for biblical principles. And now live by satellite and around the world on the Internet at vcyamerica.org. Here is today's Crosstalk. Well, hi there, and a good afternoon to you. Vic Eliason here with VCY's uh, Crosstalk program, which comes your way every day. And, of course, we replay it at 8 o'clock at night here on the VCY American Network as well. And uh, if you hear something during the day that you uh, want to uh, listen to, again, it will be posted, of course, as you well know, on the Internet at uh, crosstalkamerica.com, crosstalkamerica.com, and uh, you'll find the archives are there as well. Today we've got a number of items uh, to talk about, uh, items that are happening in our world uh, that I think it's important we be aware of. Uh, <laughs> I, I've mentioned this before, but kind of in a humorous way. Sometime back we were at the, the mall of the Brookfield Square. It's a shopping mall. And as you enter the mall, it's a covered mall. As you come into that mall, there are a number of kiosks places where people are peddling their products. You come to the, the main area, and you'll find there's a little thing, I guess you call it a kiosk, where they're selling little battery-powered helicopters. You can hold them in your hand, and some that are a little larger. One day, out of curiosity, uh, we just stopped and talked to the man about what he was doing. Oh, yes, he says, and I have this helicopter over here that has a video camera in it, and, uh, you know, you can uh, you can fly up and take pictures of your neighbor's property or whatever, and uh, it's good for 15 minutes of flying, and it can take a lot of pictures in those moments. And, of course, he's absolutely correct, because it was equipped with a digital camera. Very small, but puts the picture on a chip, or pictures on a chip, or even video in some cases, the inventors of these things have gone even further. Of course, we hear them talking about drones, these big airplanes without pilots that are being flown from the ground, maybe even from a control room in another country, and uh, as they are used for intelligence. Uh, some might debate or lack thereof. But they are used, of course, to watch for terrorists and violent activities and suspicious uh, initiatives that may be happening around our country. But the drones, of course, are fairly large. They represent, well, a sizable airplane. Some of them are jet-powered. Some of them are propeller-driven. But it wasn't too long ago that uh, I was looking at a South Dakota newspaper, and there's a picture of a, a lady cop there with a drone helicopter sitting on the trunk of her squad car. And in her hands is a control panel, along with the adjustments of things that uh, would control the aircraft, uh, she had a TV screen she could watch through the eyes of that camera. Well, one might say, well, that's kind of pipe dream, and yeah, it may be just a, a rage for now, but uh, what's going to happen with that thing? Well, Conservative Action Alerts has uh, come out with something very interesting. Uh, this is dated May 23, so it was just one day ago. But it's an interesting story. It says... Uh, what <laughs> it says, uh, what are your plans this summer? Because the federal government wants to know. They want to watch. It says, beginning next month, drones will begin flying across America. These remote controlled unmanned aerial vehicles or drones will be at altitudes under 400 feet. Now, I'm having a rough time with that one because. 400 feet, goodness, we've got several towers. In fact, our Milwaukee towers are 495 feet, and they're about 450 feet apart. And if one of those low-flying drones plows into our tower, well, it will self-destruct, I'm sure, because our towers are made of solid steel bars and beams. And But it means they'll be flying at lower than a broadcast tower. And... Uh, I can understand why the suggestion of keeping them under 400 feet, because 
If they're up there higher in another airplane, which should not be lower than a 1,000 feet over a populated area, or in some cases even higher. And so it may look over your shoulder as you're putting burgers on the grill or while your kids are jumping on the trampoline or while you're standing there talking to your neighbor or while you're enjoying a camping trip or sitting outside having lunch at some restaurant. This writer says that the eyes of the U.S. government will be upon you. And the Air Force just has announced that they can keep any personal information that they collect for over 90 days. And they can review that information to make sure you are not a terrorist threat. They say collected imagery may incidentally include U.S. persons or private property without consent. Hmm, that's interesting. And then they will analyze their tapes to see if persons or organizations reasonably believed to be engaged or about to engage in international terrorist or international narcotics activities. Well, they say this, and this is the article says, if this invasion of your property worries you, click here and send a personalized fax to every member of Congress demanding that they stop this president from destroying our Fourth Amendment rights. The article goes on and says, We cannot continue to allow the government to rob us of our freedom and rights to privacy. With drones set to take over the skies across America, the next victim of our new police state could very well be you. And they're asking people to to communicate with the government, your congressman. Well, The statement from these people is this is the fundamental transformation that the president promised when he ran for president four years ago. And since he took office, the administration began to systematically dismantle our Bill of Rights, specifically our First and Fourth Amendment freedoms. Our Fourth Amendment was written to protect us from police excesses and police mistakes In America, growing police state officers become the law and our constitutional rights literally cease to exist. Now, the Fourth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, the right of people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrants shall issue, but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. When Mr. Obama signed the FAA Modernization and Reform Act of 2012 into law on February 14th, he opened up the skies for a broad expansion of drones, and in the name of security, of course. Now, our president has shown a disdain for freedom and the Constitution, as it's said by some, and He has implemented a series of executive orders that bypass our system of rights in this country. Now, these are surveillance methods and measures that are being put in place. GPS tracking. Police have the ability to tap into your cell phone, smartphone, laptop, and navigation device to track your every move, and they can do this without obtaining a warrant. Last year, the Justice Department argued that warrantless tracking is permitted because Americans enjoy no reasonable expectation of privacy in their, or at least their cell phones or whereabouts. Now, the Department of Homeland Security recently released a series of terrorist watch videos. Uh, These video clips depict Americans as terror threats and then advise citizens to report the behaviors of their fellow citizens. Seems to me that stuff goes back to the days of Hitler and Germany, people reporting on one another. (laughs) This is kind of hard to take, folks. Video clips depicting Americans as terror threats and advising other citizens to report their behaviors of their fellow citizens. Transportation and Security Administration, the TSA, the agents at the airports across the country have harassed and groped and terrorized innocent Americans, including small children and the elderly, as they attempt to board airplanes. 
It is not uncommon to hear passengers complain of strip searches and humiliation, all without due cause. Of course, you have the social media spies. The the Department of Homeland Security makes fake Twitter and Facebook profiles for the specific purpose of scanning those sites for watch list words. And if you are tagged by the DHS, they read your posts and dig into your account to find out who you are. Court decisions. The Supreme Court ruled in Kentucky versus King that law enforcement have the authority to stage a search and seizure of Americans' property without obtaining a warrant from a judge. And that the Indiana State Supreme Court banned in Barnes versus State of Indiana that police can enter a resident's private property at any time without a warrant, without suspicion, without reason, and without even knocking and announcing their presence. Well, these are things that people are deeply concerned in very quietly, without comments from the mainstream media, without opposition from anybody in Congress, America is becoming what has been described as a police state. We go back to those words about Germany when Hitler enacted dictatorial powers after a series of decrees that eroded civil rights and constitutional democracy, and America will not be safer once these drones are airborne. The UAVs operated by inexperienced law enforcement officers on the ground will be sharing airspace with passenger aircraft operated by professional pilots. And it's estimated that by the year 2020, there could be up to 30,000 of these drones in the sky operated by police, the military, and corporations. They won't just carry cameras, mind you. Some of these drones are actually capable of carrying weapons. Hopefully, this won't be a part of America. Well, so much for drones. But I thought I would share that with you in all credits uh, of this article here from the Conservative Action Alerts. Uh, Very interesting. Very interesting. And uh, I think we need to keep our eye on the sky for this type of stuff. But, you know, with all this confusion, we need to keep our eye on the sky because Jesus is coming soon. And that is something that's eternal. That is something we can look forward to. But in the meantime, let's be faithful. And uh, it is perfectly legitimate for a Christian to stand for that which is right and abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Here's an interesting article also that uh, you might be interested in. We'll probably be coming up on a break here shortly. And and as we are here, this one has to do with Russia. Russia and homosexuality. And this is an article we'll bring to you right after the break here. Because it is, well, it's shocking. Absolutely shocking. And we share this with you from the, the, the land of the north, the big bear country, Russia. We'll find out what they're saying about the issue of the LGBT. We'll be right back. to Genesis with Dr. John Morris, scientist with the Institute for Creation Research. Dr. Morris, what are they doing with robots these days? Chris, robots are getting quite good, and they can do a multitude of things. Some of the most interesting ones are able to mimic abilities in living things in some amazing ways. Now, some robots actually have eyes, but the computer power needed to take incoming data and make sense out of it is excessive. But recently, engineers designed robot's eyes to mimic a spider's eyes. They actually vibrate the retina in the back of the eye, just like a spider. In this way, the images can be processed much more efficiently and still maintain their precision. The point is, God designed it well at the start. Modern-day engineers would do well to go back to Genesis for their starting point. To discover more facts that support your faith, please call 1-800-7-GENESIS and request the free information packet. That's 1-800-7-GENESIS.
And we leave our country and we go to the north part of the globe, to Russia. And uh, the news is very interesting. There's a place called St. Petersburg in Russia. And, uh, well, here is the headline of the article. Russian governor signs anti-LGBT anti-expression bill into law. Now, this article was written by the the proponents of homosexuality. But So I'm going to read it to you. First of all, one comment. It says, after months of massive worldwide protests by groups such as allout.org and coming out St. Petersburg, despite months of sustained international protests led by global gay rights organizations and their partners in Russia coming out side by side and Russian LGBT Federation, the governor, Gorgi Polit, let's see, Poltavenko, Venchko, there you go, Poltavenko, that's a good Swedish name there, right? <laughs> Gorgi Poltavenko signed a law yesterday, and this is dated, well, this is dated back a bit in March, that would be criminalizing the reading, writing, speaking, or reporting on anything related to gay, lesbian, bi transgender, LGBT people. Anything. Even talking about it. That's right. Writing, speaking, or reporting on anything. Now, the the homosexuals are absolutely shocked, shocked that a Russian governor w- would forbid this. What they are saying, Andre Banks, the co-founder and executive director of AllOut.org, responded, by validating a new regime of censorship and intolerance, the governor has diminished the reputation of his city with the stroke of a pen. And now, this statement by Mr. Banks, I'm not sure it's been validated or proven, but immediately coming forth with this. 100,000 people have promised not to visit the new St. Petersburg after this law goes into effect. Wow, that was a quick survey. 100,000 people. All of a sudden, within moments, they have some numbers. It always amazes me how these numbers of Thousands and millions and billions and trillions at the cuff, right off the cuff, people come up with those numbers. Could they be, well, in Christian circles, they call it evangelistically speaking. In other circles, it's called a lie. But however you want to look at it, a 100,000 people have promised not to visit the new St. Petersburg after this law goes into effect. Travel companies are considering revising their scheduled trips to the city. St. Petersburg sister cities have begun to put pressure on the governor to reject this law. Together we have sent a very clear message to the, <laughs> would you believe, to the governor and leaders around the world that there will be a high price to pay for advancing the cause of bigotry and intolerance. AllOut.org continues to stand with our partners in Russia and will work through diplomatic channels, creative online campaigns, and offline events to ensure that this law is repealed and that others like it will never see the light of day. Now, today it became known that the governor of St. Petersburg signed the homophobic law, imposing administrative fines on the so-called propaganda of sodomy, lesbianism, bisexuality, transgenderism. The authorities project, I'm sorry, the authorities project traditional values and clerical rhetoric onto politics and prioritize interests of the majority over the value of human individuality. We realize that today, Fascist-like rhetoric in Russia is becoming a basis for legislative activity. Well, you may, there may be things about Russia you don't like, but if you support traditional values, looks like Russia is putting a, 
a pitting in the ground and said, hey, across this line, we're not going to go. wonder if we've got some people in the United States, in America, in Congress, in government, that uh, when you see lifestyles that are absolutely unnatural, that are immoral, that are condemned by God's word, and you find people don't even want to talk about it for fear that you might be branded as an intolerant homophobe, a bigot. Folks, all I'm saying is these people have elected to behave this way. Behavior is a choice. They have elected to choose a lifestyle that the Bible calls sin. Of course, if the Bible means nothing to you, and it is not the guide for your life, and you set your own rules, and your moral compass is one that you set anywhere you want to go, I can understand your frustration. I can understand why you might be wondering which way to go. But I'm so glad that there was established the standards of biblical morality in God's Word. Words of warning to those who choose another lifestyle. But as Christians, we need to pray for those who are misguided. Not hatefully, but pray that the Spirit of God would touch the hearts and lives of people who are being misled by their their appetites and their emotions. Or as one homosexual, as he prayed one day on this very program, he said, God, take away my vile passions. Okay, there's another story before we get to the halfway point. How many times do we have to hear the stories of people who are dying as a result of abortions? Well, there's a woman dead after a second trimester abortion at Chicago Planned Parenthood. That's right. Chicago, July 22nd, 2012, just a few days ago, a CBS News affiliate in Chicago reported that a 25-year-old woman died Friday, July 20th, after receiving an abortion from a Planned Parenthood clinic located at 18 South Michigan Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. The woman was transported to the Loop Health Center Planned Parenthood abortion clinic from there to the Northwestern Memorial Hospital, where she was pronounced dead at 11.20 p.m. An autopsy conducted Saturday determined that she had died from hemorrhaging following a dilation and evacuation abortion. The DNE abortion method is one employed in pregnancies that have advanced beyond the first trimester. Involves, and we won't go into the details of it, except the fact that says this woman died. Abortion deaths like this are completely avoidable. But the carelessness, apparently, the alleged carelessness that's gone on has cost another woman her life. Well, that's it for the small pieces on the desk. But we do have a major story that we want to talk about, and I'm going to start now. I know we've got a break coming up. But today and yesterday, we're hearing all kinds of mumbling and grumbling and blasts against Michelle Bachman and others who signed a letter as being, well, as being intolerant. Being intolerant. The story involves Huma, that's the first name, H-U-M-A, Abedin. Huma Abedin, who is a Muslim an Islamic, a longtime aide to Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Briefly appeared on the national political radar screen when her husband, former Congressman Anthony Weiner, resigned in disgrace. Now she's got a starring role in a bit of Washington controversy that has nothing to do with Mr. Weiner's disgusting behavior. At issue are connections between Abedin's family and the Muslim Brotherhood, which has a rather mixed reputation in Washington these days. The so-called Arab Spring was really about the rise of the Brotherhood into power across much of the Arab world. A sizable portion of the foreign policy establishment is struggling to digest them as international partners in peace. 
while studiously ignoring the nasty terrorist jihad aftertaste. Now, I'm sharing this from Human Events. A group of House Republicans, including Representative Michelle Bachman of Minnesota, Louis Gomert of Texas, Tom Rooney of Florida, Trent Franks of Arizona, and Lynn Westmoreland of Georgia recently sent a letter, all of them, to various security agencies, including the Department of Defense, Homeland Security, and Justice, expressing concern about the undue influence that is exercised within the U.S. government by the Muslim Brotherhood. Given that the U.S. government has established in federal court that the Muslim Brotherhood's mission in the United States is destroying the Western civilization from within, a practice that the brothers call civilization jihad. We believe that the apparent involvement of those with such ties raises serious security concerns that warrant your urgent attention, the authors of the letter declared. The representatives are concerned that the Brotherhood is conducting deliberate operations to influence U.S. policy by creating a fundamental misunderstanding of the Muslim Brotherhood by U.S. intelligence, which could in turn have contributed to the policy's community susceptibility to subversion at the hands of the brothers and their allies. The remarkable February 2011 description of the Muslim Brotherhood as a largely secular group interested in social ends and the betterment of the political order in Egypt by the Director of National Intelligence, James Clapper, is cited as an example. Well, folks, you've heard me talk about the beautiful literature that's been sent to us as media from the Muslim Brotherhood, telling us how to address Islam, the proper way to do this, and the things that reflect the wholesome and wonderful things that it stands for. It doesn't talk about Sharia law. It doesn't talk about those other things. It simply shows beautiful pictures of little children all smiling and all of the positives connected with it. But Michelle Bachman and her associates there in Congress took the time to write a letter of deep concern. And you would not believe who some of the people are that are calling that intolerable, that are calling that inappropriate, that are calling that bigotry, because some Congress people simply wrote to the government and said, look out, because the Muslim Brotherhood, as you've already watched, has virtually taken over the government of Egypt. And their commitment to Israel is one that is rather alarming as we hear the Islamic say they won't be satisfied till Israel is in the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea. We'll be right back. Most people devote much time researching and investigating important issues before making a decision or reaching a conclusion. Yet when faced with the most important issue of their earthly life, where will I spend eternity, they appear to be unconcerned or disinterested. Since God does not promise anyone tomorrow, and man's eternal destiny is sealed at death, would it not be wise to investigate these things? That's the purpose of the book, Preparing for Eternity, in which author Mike Gendron contrasts the truth of God's Word with the teachings and traditions he was taught for over 30 years in the Roman Catholic Church. He found that eternal life is not merited by good works, but is given freely by God's grace to those who put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as their all-sufficient Savior. The book, Preparing for Eternity, is available for a donation of $17 or more to VCY America by calling 1-800-729-9829. That's 1-800-729-9829.
And welcome back to Crosstalk as we're uh, talking about this issue of uh, the blast against conservative Congress people who are a bit concerned because Hillary, who is Hillary Clinton, who is the Secretary of State, has an assistant who is directly connected, her family, strongly a part of the Muslim Brotherhood. And the big question is, could this lady, Huma, her name is, Huma Abedin, be in a position where she would have access to secrets or vital information at a high-ranking level coming right from the Secretary of State to pass on to the Muslim Brotherhood, who have been favorites of her family? Some have often said blood is thicker than water. And we'll be talking about that, that uh, in a family framework where there's strong allegiance to an ideology, the big question is, could this be a security breach? Now, the Brotherhood's motto, the Muslim Brotherhood's motto is this, Allah is our objective. The Prophet is our leader. The Quran is our law. Jihad is our way. Dying in the way of Allah is our highest hope. Now, how do you define them as a secular group? Right here in our own city, in the city of Brookfield, Wisconsin, a mosque has been approved and it's been labeled a house of prayer. But those who are experts in Islamic law and Islamic culture indicate that a mosque is literally an embassy, a place where Sharia law holds forth. And one expert said you never see a mosque closed down. Once it's established, it becomes a a mark in the community that this is where the law of Islam remains. Now, there was a letter sent, of course. Another letter was sent to the Inspector General of the Office of the Director of National Intelligence that created the most intense controversy. And this letter, also signed by uh, Michelle Bachman, Mr. Franks, Mr. Gomert, Rooney, Westmoreland, connections between Huma Abedin's family and the Muslim Brotherhood were again questioned. The letter noted that the State Department, sometimes under the direction, specific direction, of Abedin's boss, Hillary Clinton, has taken actions recently that have been enormously favorable to the Muslim Brotherhood and its interests, including Secretary Clinton's personal intervention to grant Brotherhood leader Tariq Ramadan entry into the United States, Clinton's waiver of restrictions on financial aid to Egypt and the Palestinian Authority were also mentioned. Now, folks, these people in good faith wrote the letter. They represent you. They're government representatives. But it has been all over the place. And the thing that shocked me, and Wisconsinites, you better listen up on this one, because a man who I have respected, and I still recognize his authority, as a representative, I've known Jim Sensenbrenner for probably 20 years from a from an official standpoint as our representative. At one time, he invited me and a couple of other attorneys to go to Washington to, to speak on some issues that were dealing with pro-life. And Jim is strong on pro-life. But Jim Sensenbrenner made a statement that shocked me. Slinger, Wisconsin, one of the most conservative congressmen in the country, stepped up to defend Huma Abedin, a top aide to Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, and the rights of all Muslim Americans yesterday against Representative Michelle Bachman, her spurious accusations that she is affiliated with the Muslim Brotherhood, calling them the wrong thing to do. Mr. Sensenbrenner, I would suggest that you go to the historical record, that you take your computer and Google the connection between that family and the Muslim Brotherhood. It shocks me that a conservative and a fine congressman would not recognize the hazards of this kind of a, an attack 
on conservative people. During the town meeting that was held by Representative Sensenbrenner on Sunday, a constituent lauded Bachman's anti-Muslim witch hunt about a supposed Muslim Brotherhood infiltration of the U.S. government and called on her congressman to support her efforts. And Sensenbrenner instead used the opportunity not only to defend Abedin, but to advocate for a larger notion of religious pluralism in America and a separation between church and state. And I say this with all due respect, Mr. Sensenbrenner, that Islam is more than a religion. It is a government. It has its own set of laws. It has its own courts. It has its own discipline, which is very severe. It has its honor killings, the history of it. And somebody might say, well, Vic, somebody's picking on a particular ethnic group. And what would happen? I mean, it's not fair. All I can say is the history. I don't find uh, any any. I mean, yes, there are a few Norwegians out there that do dumb things. And a few Swedes out there that do dumb things, too. But the whole race is not thrown to the dogs because somebody makes a dumb move. What about the Irish? What about the Polish? What about the Germans? I mean, I'm talking about domestic people who have a, who have a, a heritage, and you don't see this, but the common, I mean, who is it? Is it the Swedes or the Norwegians or the Germans that are out there putting bombs on themselves and blowing themselves to smithereens and killing people? Is it the Irish? Is it the Hawaiians, the people from South America? No. It seems to follow a certain background that has a violent commitment called jihad. Well, I've said all I'm going to say. We're going to open the phones. If you'd like to join us in conversation, your thoughts, the phone line is open right now, 800-733-9829. What do you think about uh, the issue? And, and Mr. Sensenbrenner, I, I, I think he's a fine man. I'm not here to attack him as a person. But I highly question his research of understanding there is a connection between Ms. Abedin and the, and the Muslim Brotherhood. There's also a thing called the Muslim Sisterhood. It's out there. But I'd invite you to call, pick up the phone if you'd like to join us right now. The telephone number, 800-733-9829. And we uh, will not talk about these and the other things. Maybe you want to talk about the drones. Maybe it's something else. But these are there are so many of these issues that are coming our way. Sometimes we go around with our head in a fog. But truly, some of you, in fact, some of you can even call Mr. Sensenbrenner and let him know. I mean, he's got a number. The The switchboard, the congressional switchboard, is always open, 202-224-3121, or 202-225-3121. Ask for Mr. Jim Sensenbrenner's office, and leave a word. Let him hear from people across the country. Because right now, we're not just talking to Wisconsin or Michigan or whatever. We're so grateful for the people listening from the East Coast to the West Coast, joining us for these moments that we have together. And one of the things we've tried to not do, and that is to clutter the program with a bunch of commercials. We break very quickly for 60 seconds, and we come right back. But right now, our phone lines are are busy. And Robert in Milwaukee. Robert, what are your thoughts? Yes. You're on, you're on the air, Robert. Yes, Vic. I, I was just called in to say, you know, I don't understand, you know, why Simpson Brenner just reeled against Michelle like he did. I mean, you know, it's a known fact, you know, by listening to your show, you know, I gained so much in-depth information about mm-hmm. Islam and listen to Usama. You know, I mean, he, you know, maybe someone ought to send him a package or something where he can, you know, go to the website and, you know, and, and look these things up for himself and he can come to a reality that this is, not just any ordinary religion. This is a government, you know, with laws and rules and regulations, and, and they also, you know, uh, support jihad and, you know, and killing, in, you know, innocent people. I mean, you know, when you look at what's going on in Nigeria, you know, Christians are being killed daily just because they believe in Jesus Christ. That's right. 
And you think of Pastor Yosef, who's been in prison now over a thousand days, a man with a little family and a wife, and he's a young man, and he's being imprisoned because he declares Jesus to be his Savior. That's and, right. With I that, mean, with, you know, with, look with at, a, I mean, you know, it's just, just someone needs to inform him. You know, it, it just, you know, when I hear, you know, these elected officials, Obama, uh, you know, Sensibre, and all these people, you know, who pro, you know, Islamic, you know, they they don't know what's really going on. Either they don't want to know what's really going on, either they don't, they don't take the time to look up the information to see the truth, what's really going on. Well, you see, my friend, there are a lot of people that like to be politically correct. You don't want to raise too many waves because politically it could be damaging, and I hope I hope that's not where Jim is coming from. He's a, he's a fine man. He's represented Wisconsin very well on many issues. Um, my personal feeling is on this one, he's... He has been oversensitive and conditioned for political correctness. Thank you, Robert. Appreciate the call. Let's go to Ohio. And Will, in Ohio, your thoughts. Hello, Will. Yes, uh, hi, Vic. Um, I just find it fascinating that um, the uh, atheists and the liberal elite have very, very little to say about Islam, but they have much to challenge Christianity about. They challenge Genesis with the... Um, all the way to Revelation, they have much to say, but yet they have nothing to say about uh, Islam, especially when you look historically at Muhammad. Basically, he was a warlord. Um, there was nothing exceptional about Muhammad and, and um, his beginnings. Um, there's no comparison between Christianity and, and, and Islam, but it just amazes me that, that um, there's so little challenge that um, so people don't look at um, under the microscope like they look at Christianity and challenge continuously. Um, it's it's appalling to me. Well, you know, it's interesting, Will, that people will will sit there when they're vetting a, a political candidate to come in. They'll go back into their childhood and find something. They broke a window with a baseball bat or something. And they'll come up with everything to scandalize, just to to shoot them down as far as you know, put discredit into the into the mix. Uh, yes. but, but and they'll they will spend hours and thousands of dollars going through the old records, looking for any little thing. You know, if, if a conservative did what Muhammad did, exactly. he was there are there are people. Walid Shubat says that Muhammad was a child molester. He, well, we know he was a murderer, and 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 he his whole his whole plan was to to force the the different uh, the Bedouin tribes under under his under his rule. Hmm. I mean, uh, uh, scandalous, but no one no one can point that finger at Jesus Christ. That's right. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate the call. Coming up on a break here, we're going to be right back in sixty seconds. And if you'd like to call, make it brief and to the point. We still have some time for calls. This is Crosstalk. For the Worldview Weekend Minute, I'm Brandon House. Our website is worldviewweekend.com. Today, number 19 on our list of 20 characteristics of false teachers embraced by the false church. Number 19 is false teachers can be a test from God to our faithfulness and to reveal true and false converts. Deuteronomy 13, verse 3 speaks to this. You should not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Isn't that something? Today, as we see the proliferation of false teachers, false prophets, false apostles, and many are following them. But you know what? John, the book of John, tells us, John chapter 10, verses 4 through 5, that true believers don't follow false teachers and false shepherds. So really, false teachers can be a test from God to test our faithfulness as well as to reveal false converts. For the Worldview Week in a Minute, I'm Brandon House. And welcome back to Crosstalk, where we're continuing with our discussion here. We're going to go 
to uh, Minnesota and talk with Betty online. Betty, how are you today? Hi, I'm fine, thank you. What would you like to share? Oh, Vic, I just wanted to thank you so much for addressing this issue about Michelle Bachman. I live in the Minneapolis area, and the negative publicity around here is just gay. It's just sickening. Uh, there's such a liberal left media uh, in every the newspaper, the media, the TV programs. They're all liberal, and they're all painting a really nasty picture about it. And they have don't have a clue about what's really going on. They don't have a clue about the Muslim Brotherhood. They're all blinded. And I just was, I just really really feel that we need to pray for Amen. people that their blinders would be removed so that they can see the truth about what's going on. Uh, there's just such a cover-up of, the, of reality that uh, we need to pray that people can see the truth. You know, Betty, the, the truth, many of these people are all, all the cookie-cutter, political correct people. Right. They, they, they have to go through their little litany of uh, what they claim is uh, fairness. It's ignorance. They just do not see. They don't yeah. want to choose. They choose not to. And you know what, Vic? I also believe that there's also a huge amount of money being brought in and paid by subversive governments, probably Saudi Arabia. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, probably Muslim Brotherhood to cover up a lot of the real truth. I really believe that. Well, and we make the Muslim Brotherhood look like a ni- bunch of nice guys until you see what's going to happen in Egypt, what already has happened in Egypt. Because but they don't they don't have a clue because they don't listen to the, the, the true information. They don't get it, you know, like from Usana, Usama Daktak, who mm-hmm. his program is wonderful, you know, exposing the, the truth about Islam. If only that could be on the mainstream media. That's what we need. You You're bad. Well, we just th- have to pray, 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 pray. Jesus, come quickly, huh? Betty, you hear us in Minneapolis? Yes, uh-huh. Great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we're so grateful that you called, and thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. Thank you. Bye-bye. Let's go to Bob in South Dakota, and Bob, you're on the air. Hello, Bob. Hello. You're on the air. Please, uh, please, okay. turn your, please turn your radio, Bob, please turn your radio completely down, okay? All the way down. I'm outside. I'm way away from the radio. Okay, good. I was... <laughs> anyway, Vic, I really very much appreciate your programming. Thank I you. I appreciate VCI, VCY, mm-hmm. America, um, for almost everything that I hear, but especially your program. Um, I echo um, what the last two callers said, and uh, I don't want to take up much time. Um, I just wanted to... Um, praise you for your ministry, I guess would be the the right term for it. Um, I so much appreciate uh, your presentation of the full truth um, in our news, and uh, I'm sure it's not easy. I'm sure you get a lot of threats. You, you, yeah. you have to, because yours is the only program that that I can tune to, and, you know, it, perhaps there are others, um, you know, people in other parts of America who have access to programming uh, similar to Crosstalk. But here in the Midwest where we live, um, uh, VCY and Crosstalk is our only source for good, consistent truth about the media and about what's transpiring in America. And it's bad. Man. It, I, yeah, America's going to the dogs. Well, and, uh, uh, you remember uh, the, the verse from Chronicles... If my people who are called by my name, that's talking about Christians, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. some of the Christians are living wicked lives. Of course. Then will yes. I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. And that's all of us. Every one of us is a sinner, and we're very prone to, to making uh, sinful acts and, and, and sinful decisions and people... Are, are are making decisions that are totally contrary to the word of God. Bob, you're, you're thank you, and, and if you if you're thankful for the ministry, give God the praise. We're just honored to be a part of it. And I will support VCY America and your programming. God bless thank you, you, my so friend. Much. Thank you for the call. Let's see. We're going to go to East Troy, Wisconsin, very quickly. East Troy, you're on the air. Yeah, uh, Vic. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that. Those drones have got to go. You know, I thought I would serve twice in my country for in the army, and I thought that was for freedom. We don't need people looking in at us. And Betty pretty much summed it up about the Muslims. 
I've gone to your rallies and seen Bill Federer, Wally, and Osama. If the average person can understand what's going on by looking around them and seeing country after country after country fall and because of the Muslims, and we see all the mosques going up in America here, why can't our congressmen figure it out? That's one that uh, I don't know the answer to. Mm-hmm. All we need is pray that God will open their eyes and uh, also when it's time to elect to pray that God will give us godly and wise people to take the steering wheel of our culture until Jesus comes. It has to stop. Thank you, Vic. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the call. And let's see, just quickly, another call from uh, Claire in Germantown. Very quickly, Claire. Mm-hmm. Yes, I called Sensed Runner. I told him to... I pray for him. He should go to the library tonight, get out the Encyclopedia Britannica, and read exactly how the Muslim religion started. It's all right there. And I said, I love you, Sensenbrenner. I've always supported you, and I'm deeply embarrassed and and sad for you. You know this, Claire, that a copy of Usama Dakdok's uh, English version clear, literal English version of the Koran, Uh has been sent to every congressman and every senator in government. Every one of them has received it. But my my guess is that very few of them have even cracked the cover. The premium on ignorance, the premium of saying, well, I just don't understand, or or we've just got to be careful and not be judgmental. You know something? If if the people in in the health, the people that take care of our health, we're just as accepting this culture would have died because of, of, of illness and pollution and all the other stuff. Are we not capable of discerning something that's dangerous and the history and the pattern that it has generated over the decades? Well, folks, we've come to the end of a program, and I, I appreciate the last call, Claire. At this point, I want to thank you for joining us. I hope that you'll pray. Pray for our country. Pray that God will open the eyes of our leaders and give them the courage to stand up for what's right and to recognize that political correctness can sink the ship. Thanks for joining us on Crosstalk. to Crosstalk via satellite and the Internet from BCY America. Views expressed may or may not be those of this station. For a CD of today's program, send a donation of $6 or more to VCY Tape Ministry, 3434 West Kilbourne Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53208, or download by RSS or podcast from CrosstalkAmerica.com. And join us again for Crosstalk. Crosstalk.